Hi, and welcome to the programme Podium. And this is session 024. And it's called Beyond Doubt. And it was inspired by a conversation I was having this morning at one of our business over breakfast meetings with a lovely guy called Matt. And I said to him, look, I'm just about to go and record this week's show. You know, what is the what is the biggest thing that prevents people from doing what they really want to do? And he said, doubt. And so there is the inspiration for this week's show. I'm inspired to share with you what happened to me this morning, because as I arrived at the meeting, I actually have an eye problem and I had a tear this morning, which makes the eye go incredibly bloodshot and the eye gets so dry that the cornea epilithial membrane tears. And normally this happens at night. And yesterday I was really grateful to have a lens bandage put on top of it. But even that I had a problem with this morning and the eye still tore despite having that bandage put in. So I arrive and it, it happened just as I arrived at the car park. And what happened to me inside was really interesting because I had all sorts of thoughts flash through my mind about was I going to be able to carry on and and have chats with people? And was I going to be able to um, do my presentation? So there's a performance issue here. And it was fascinating to me what happened because I had all these thoughts come through of, oh, my word, is this always going to happen to me? You know, I've just had this bandage put in and, you know, I had to go private and it cost me a lot of money. And and, and it, they just came up. And I felt hesitation. I felt doubt. Like, am I going to be able to do this? And then I, my deeper knowing kicked in and something said to me, just go and take the bandage out of the eye. Now, I really didn't want to do that, but something said to me to do it, and I did. And then within seconds, I was kind of back in the game, and I'd almost forgotten that I'd had this eye problem as I come into the hotel. Now, this level of clarity and calmness simply wouldn't have been available to me without this understanding of how my mind works to create my experience. Like I knew, I mean, this was inside my body. This was actually my eye and it was very painful. And I knew there was something I needed to do, whether or not that's take some medication or, or, or remove the lens. But of course, this now means I don't have a bandage lens in my eye and tonight, potentially, it's going to tear again. And I could have gone to all sorts of thinking around the future. And I didn't. It didn't make sense to me to do that. So one of the things that's really helpful looking in this direction of the truth of where your experience is really coming from. And in this work, we call that the inside out, i.e. that we are projecting thought into the world, like we are giving attention and belief to particular thoughts and that becomes our personal thinking. We have consciousness which works our entire sensory system and so it brings those thoughts to life and we then project out into the world our experience. The interesting thing for me here in terms of Having those thoughts around, can I carry on? Do I need to go home? And then it kind of started to whip up a little bit of momentum. You know, is this always going to happen to me? You know, can people see that my eye is bloodshot? Um, is this going to affect how it is I deliver my, my presentation? All of those thoughts would have bothered me in the past like they would I would have seen them as real I would have seen them as solid I would have seen them as something that I would have needed to do I would have needed to 
try to manage them. I would have had to overcome the experience that they create in me. Because I would have seen them as significant. And this is the big difference between where I was in my career as a national coach and where I am now, which is a state of mind specialist, high performance consultant, is that I can see, I can have thought and not go with it. My understanding allows me to have thought, which will give me a feeling state and therefore an experience, but I don't have to go with it. Like my body can be nervous, it can be tight for a short while, but I have a deeper knowing that that is temporary, that for some reason I'm, I've started to engage in thoughts which are unhelpful and unproductive, as if they're real, as if they're truth, as if they have the nature of permanence, and they don't. Thought is arbitrary, it is fluid, it is changing. And there is something that we are a part of which isn't. It is constant. And when I touch that space in myself, that I'm not my eye condition. I can see that I have an eye condition. I can see that I'm having an experience in that moment of uncomfortableness, but I'm not that. So I kind of just go back behind that and, okay, what am I? What am I? And then I see that, wow, I am part of the universal intelligence of all things. And this deeper knowing that there is a way in which life works, there is a way in which the human experience comes into form. And just seeing it in action like I did this morning was so helpful to me. So when we look at this in a sporting context, there's going to be many times athletes and coaches and managers feel disconnected or confused or doubt and hesitation. In my experience, all that was available to me before is that somehow we needed to overcome that feeling state, that somehow we needed to control it as if it was real, as if it was a thing. And it's, I've used this metaphor before, but thoughts are like clouds in the sky and they're passing. We don't really have to go with them because we're not those. We're much more than the clouds passing in the sky. We're the sky. And there's nothing that we really need to do. Yet, without this understanding, I would have adopted all sorts of techniques and tools to manage and change my feeling state as if it was significant and relevant. As if it was, if I didn't deal with it, it was going to determine the future and my performance in the future. Well, what if there's a level of understanding or a level of consciousness that allows us to have experiences that are nervous and uncomfortable and bring us hesitation, and we don't get freaked out by them? We don't consider them to be real, like stones rather than clouds passing in the sky. Wow, that just changes everything. What would be the use of having tools and techniques and methodologies to manage your mental life when you could trump all of that 
and just understand it. You could have a level of awareness that is so superior that it helps you to transcend those experiences rather than have to cope with them and overcome them as if they're permanent and tangible. And I'm just going to finish this podcast show that I've called Beyond Doubt just with some little tasks to help you with your reflections. So how many times in the past have you, can you recall that you have been in a situation where you really felt nervous and doubted yourself? And then something happened and you did it anyway. Well, what's that all about? And how many living minutes might you have lost preparing and worrying and moaning and um, judging a situation or circumstance? And then when it comes to it, it's completely different to what you'd imagined into form, into being. And then it went off really very well. What was that all about? And how many times do we start performances, whether it's a sport performance or presentation or a musical performance? And yes, we do have nerves. But just somehow we know that they will go. And they do. Well, if we can see it in that area of our lives, then maybe we can see it thought in action in other areas of our lives. And that we don't always need to go with our thoughts. But there is a deeper truth. There is something that we are a part of. There is a way in which life works for everyone that allows us to live in a much more peaceful way, still totally inspired and highly energised, because we have access to wisdom to just show up in us. We get in touch with our innate resilience as a human being, and we leave behind the, the, the noise that's paradoxically created in us with our personal mind and our capacities to bring thought into being in a really personal way. We don't have to go with that. We have the free will as human beings to go with whatever thoughts we want. So I hope you've enjoyed the show. It's certainly been a really lovely morning for me. And if you would like to get hold of me, you can send me an email on denise.holland at class-performance.com or you can look on my website for all sorts of programs, www.class-performance.com. So I would love to hear from you. So do drop me a line and let me know what sort of subjects, what sort of things come up for you in your life whether it's in sport, whether it's in your business life, whether it's in your home life, what sort of mental activity comes up in your life and is troublesome? And how is it that we can speak about it? Let's bring it into the light and let's have a, have a conversation around it and let's see if we can see some truth around how it is that that comes into being. So until then, I will... Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your tuning in to the podcast show. And I look forward to sharing with you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.